Recently, I started my video game music collection. The desire to expand my collection leads me to spend a lot of times on online stores and auction sites. I bought a lot of good shit with a sketchy low price, and I'm really happy that I'm able to add this bad boy to my collection. But it was until I laid my hands on this old-time classic Donkey Kong Country the original soundtrack that you no, know, I feel something's off. How come an album that is worth at least 400 US dollar can be bought with a cheap price of 3 US dollar? Soon, I found out all these records are bootleg version. But there's a twist: they are all legally manufactured and legally sold. But how and why? As a developing country in the mid 20th century, Taiwan was highly dependent on developed country for their technology, finance, and knowledge. And for a country with unstable and highly dependent economy, it's not realistic to get license of a work from another country because it will be unaffordable for the public. Getting license from a copyrighted material was more difficult compared to modern days. Plus the lack of understanding for intellectual property right, and the urge of getting rich, people tend to just make pirated copies. So it would just be a lot easier for people to obtain and learn from other countries. Plus, between 1949 to 1987, Taiwan was run by martial law. The government suppressed freedom of speech, freedom of press, and many other human rights. This also includes all sorts of entertainments like comic, puppetry, televisions, music, and many more. Basically, Taiwan's entertainment culture is crippled. But martial law doesn't affect entertainment outside of Taiwan at all. So we were left with no choice but to steal all kinds of work from other country just to fill our need for leisurement from our pathetic daily life. Even when the martial law was lifted, the damage was already done. The entertainment industry was unable to recover, and pirating has become so common that people find it normal. And this is part of the reason why Taiwan became the kingdom of piracy. Bootleg records being part of the problem. Label making pirated copy when Western music started to gain popularity in Taiwan. In the 60s, there are 50 or more bootleg vinyl record factory in just Sanchon District alone. In the 80s, cassette become way cheaper, obtainable, and smaller compared to vinyls. It became a common to everyone to bring a portable cassette player and bootleg cassette anywhere they go. In the 90s, CD rises. Everyone with a computer and a disc burner are able to make copies of the CD they own, making piracy a bigger and bigger problem. Before 1985, every work had to be registered here in Taiwan to own the copyright of the work, which means that you can't prevent or sue anyone for stealing your creation if they aren't registered. After the new amendment to copyright law, there's two major adjustment. First, copyright infringement is criminalized. Second, how one obtain copyrights changes from upon registration to upon creation, making every works in Taiwan obtain its copyright when it's created. But somehow this change only applies to Taiwanese works that is not created by Taiwanese. Still have to register to get its copyright. Not only that, it also needs to fulfill one of these two requirement. First, works that are first published in the territory under the jurisdiction of Taiwan, or second, were the terms of a treaty or an agreement that has been ratified by resolution of the legislative provide. There's only a few country has this kind of treaty or agreement. This includes the United States, United Kingdom, France, Switzerland, Spain diaspora, and Korean diaspora. For rest of the country, unless the work is first published and registered in Taiwan, 
They are not protected by Taiwanese copyright law. In 1992, another new amendment to copyright law was made, making all foreign works obtain copyright upon creation instead of registration. But this doesn't help all that much, because these works still have requirements to meet. The U.S. being the special case, have the same copyright treatment as Taiwanese. Because of a treaty of friendship signed in 1946, according to the national treatment principle signed in the treaty, Taiwan should give the Americans a standard of protection equivalent to that of the nationals. Upon a conference on the protection of intellectual property rights held in 1985 and the agreement signed in 1993. It was reassured that Americans share the same copyright protection standard with the Taiwanese. With this standard of protection and criminalization of copyright infringement, pirating American music became risky. Many bootleg labels slowly stopped pirating American music and changed their main target to another country that has a close relationship with Taiwan, who has a massive cultural influence. And that country is Japan. Around the mid 80s to the early 90s, when Studio Ghibli became extremely popular in Taiwan, the public started to notice the existence and the rich culture of anime, and bootleg labels find their marketability in anime and game soundtrack. But there wasn't just one label noticed the opportunity. There's a ton of labels like. Sunmei, Xingxing, Shishen, Chaoyang, Ultra Record, Hoshen, and Ever Anime, of course, with other small labels. They were all competing each other for the throne of the Pirate King. In the end, Sunmei and Ever Anime wins the war due to its cheap price, huge variety, and high quality. In fact, they were so popular that some old anime fans from the Western world. Or try to import boxes or even crates of bootleg copies back to America or Europe, just because they have a lot of unpopular album that is almost impossible to obtain its genuine copy, which costs five times lower compared to the genuine one. And this is why these records are all over the world. The problem of piracy has a major change in 2002. When Taiwan joined the WTO, due to the signing of the WTO's agreement on trade-related intellectual property right, forces Taiwan to amend the copyright law to include the works from all WTO member states under the protection of the copyright law. TRIPS also requires member states to abide their provision of the Berne Convention and apply retrospective protection to works. That is to say, these bootleg records has been illegalized retrospectively due to this agreement. Since then, bootleg records has been illegalized retrospectively. The government also gives a two-year grace period. By 2004, all bootleg records should be removed from the store. Since 2002, a large number of bootleg labels has been disbanded. Move to China or Southern Asia, or actually getting permission to sell genuine copies. Since then, Taiwan's merchant has no longer openly display and sold bootleg records, and the golden age of bootleg records has finally come to an end. Finally, in the mid 2000, Taiwan was no longer considered the kingdom of piracy. I hope this little history lesson didn't bore you out. People in Taiwan tend to avoid talking or remembering this part of our inglorious past, but I think it's pretty important to remember this in order to encourage us to be original and to be supportive to our entertainment culture. The next section gonna be more interesting, I swear. Here is the section I'll try to help you identify if your anime or game records 
our bootleg version or not. When it comes to Taiwanese bootleg anime slash game records, they come with either cassette or CDs. I've never seen a Taiwanese bootleg anime or game vinyl before and I don't think they actually exist. But I'm not pretty certain about it. I have never seen or heard any genuine Taiwanese anime or game cassette. I assume every Taiwanese game and anime cassette are pirated copies. I'm pretty sure but not 100% certain that all anime or game cassette that are written in traditional Chinese are fake. Now moving on to the CDs. Before that, I must tell you, this only applies to anime or game CDs that are made in Taiwan. Method 1. See when your CD is manufactured. If your CD is manufactured after 2004, you're pretty much safe. Method 2. Identify by its music label. Every anime and game CD that is made by every anime are bullet copies. And the same also goes for He Shen, Xu Shen, and Chao Yang. As far as I know, Shenmei has two genuine albums, which is Biohazard 2, the original soundtrack, and Miracle Garden. Archer Record also have some genuine copies alongside with the bootleg one. Their Ho Xin Engi's DVDs and CDs are genuine. Also, I think there's one or two more animes, DVD and CDs are genuine, but I couldn't recall which anime. Method 3. Identify by its cover. When it comes to bootleg anime or game records, the cover lies in three categories. The first one is the blatant ripoff, like this one. You can definitely tell there's something off about this Pikachu. And also, we have a legendary trainer like Shinji. Usually, this kind of anime CD contains a selection of popular anime opening like, like this one. They got uh, Pokemon, Slam Dunk, Sailor Moon, City Hunter. Like this, this one is obviously fake. There's no way you cannot tell this one is a fake one. Not only this weird Pikachu, there's also record that look like this. You know, it's obviously fake. And the second one is the weird crop. You can see there's a weird black line on the lower side of the cover. And also, you can see the aspect ratio is a little bit off and with this weird traditional Chinese font. Let's see the booklet. There's nothing on the booklet, it's just black and white. There's nothing on it. You can also tell this one is a bootleg version when you see closely. The third category, actually real looking one. They look pretty much the same compared to genuine copy, but if you have a genuine copy, you can see there's something missing on the bootleg copy. Here, I got two exact two exact album turning Gundam original soundtrack one of it is a genuine copy and one of it is a fake one can you tell which one is a fake one just by looking at its cover and now let's see the back side can you tell which one is a fake one and which one is a real one let's see the front side again so this one is a fake one, and this one is a real one. You can definitely tell the fake one is a little bit yellowish compared to the genuine copy. And also the aspect ratio is a little bit off, but I'm not sure if you can tell the difference here. The bootleg copy doesn't have a lot of information written under the back of its cover. You can see there's a music label's logo, the label's name, address, telephone number, and nothing else. And let's see the genuine copy. You can see, uh, let's focus, focus. 
the copyright holder, the price of the CD, when it's manufactured, and their music label. The CD itself has a neat little design and the quality looks pretty good. There's also a lot of information and logo on the CD. And let's see the bootleg version, shall we? There's the title, and there's the music label, the serial number, and nothing else. There's no design and no information on this CD. And next, let's compare the booklet. This one is a genuine. This one is a genuine one, and this one is the fake one. As you can tell, the fake one is a little bit glossy, and the print quality and paper's quality is a little bit uh, not as good as the genuine one. Other than the print quality, everything. Everything else looks exactly the same. I don't think there's any, you know, big difference between the booklet other than the papers and the print quality. I know, I know, not every one of you have two exact copy of a same CD to compare which one is a real one or which one is a fake one. And you know, most of the CDs online don't have the full disclosure. So I got some more little tips that might help you identify if your CD is a bullet copy or not. Let's see this Final Fantasy 1 and 2, the original soundtrack. Let's see the backside of it. Focus, focus, focus. Here. You can see there's something off like this, producer spelled with two E but no C. And let's see my Dracula X remix. Also producer is written in two E but no C. Usually the bootleg version, their English spelling is a little bit off. Uh, but you know, some of the bootleg copies actually have the correct spelling and grammar on it like this one producer is spelled right. So this is just a little tip. And uh, also the fake one won't 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 have its copyright holder written on it. Like this one. They have the copyright mark and the copyright holder. Usually the fake one don't have this. But some of the genuine copy don't have their copyright holder and the copyright mark written on the back of the cover. So this is just a little tip rather than a real method. I hope this video helps you know a little bit better about Taiwanese bootleg anime and game records. What do I think of these records? Uh, I think the quality is actually not that bad. It's pretty good to my standard. And it's pretty fun to own a piece of history. But should you buy these records? Eh, nowadays, it's pretty easy to buy goods or CDs straight from Japan. And the shipping fee is actually getting cheaper and cheaper each year. Also, there's a lot of second-hand record shop or online thrift shop that makes you find what you want pretty easily and with a fair price. I'm pretty sure you'll be way happier to own a genuine copy rather than a bootleg one. There's more story about piracy in Taiwan, and bootleg record is just part of it. Also, there's a lot of video ideas about piracy and other stuff I want to make, but the time and effort I put into it doesn't match the outcome. So, it would be great if you show a little bit of support by subscribing to this channel. It will certainly help a lot. And also, if you have a bootleg record you want to share, or if you are not certain if your CD is a bootleg copy or not, please feel free to contact me under this email address. And
Bye. Mmm, yes. Ooh.